The next phase of the works dealt with the stabilization of a 900 meter length of the existing sea wall. Much of this length of wall, despite having been reinforced or completely rebuilt up to four times in the last 50 years, was now at the end of its life. The most cost-effective way of stabilizing the wall was to place a protective layer of large rock immediately in front of the wall. The contract for this rock protection was awarded to Peter Burse Limited for the sum of 1.4 million pounds in September 1986. This contractor chose to supply the rock from a quarry on the coast of northwest Spain. Many factors, such as the availability and the cheapness of sea versus road transport, contributed to make this a cheaper option than bringing in rock from the nearest suitable source in the UK. Blasting at the quarry took place every week. Approximately 10,000 tons of granite rock was brought down in each blast. The contract specified that the rocks required for Seaford should weigh between 7 and 15 tons. These had to be sorted from the blast with the remaining rock going to a crusher for the production of aggregate, the normal business of the quarry. Any fears on the suitability of this hard granite were quickly dispelled. This piece of rock was dropped from a height of over 30 meters and suffered no more damage than a few chipped corners. A hole 40 millimeters in diameter was then drilled in each piece of rock. An epoxy resin grout was mixed and poured into the hole and a 25 millimeter diameter threaded steel bar with a detachable hook eye was inserted into the hole. Within a few hours, the rock weighing up to 15 tons could be lifted, relying solely on the bond between the epoxy resin and the granite. Before reaching its final destination on the beach at Seaford, each rock would have to be lifted and set down up to eight times. This simple and ingenious method of lifting was undoubtedly one of the main reasons for this contractor winning the contract. The rocks could now begin their journey to Seaford. They were first transported by lorry to the port of El Ferrol, some seven kilometers distant from the quarry. They were then offloaded and stored on the quayside until sufficient quantity was available to charter a ship to take them to New Haven. Up to 5,000 tons of rock were taken at one time each rock being carefully stowed so as not to damage the lifting eyes. At New Haven, the recently installed container berth crane was used to transfer the rocks to lorries for the last leg of their journey to Seaford. Before placing the rock on the beach, a layer of smaller stone up to a meter thick was placed both to protect the chalk seabed and form a firm foundation for the larger rocks. Two 100-ton capacity cranes were used to lift the rocks into position. These cranes had to stand on top of the seawall in order to place the rock. Great care was taken to investigate the ground conditions behind the wall to ensure that the load from the cranes did not precipitate the very collapse this contract was intended to avoid. The contractor carried out all the placing during the winter when sea conditions often made work impossible. Nevertheless, with the quick and easy method of lifting, he was able to make full use of fair weather and would place up to a thousand tons of rock in one day. All 58,000 tons of rock required under the contract were placed in four months and the job was completed in January 1987, some six weeks ahead of the original program. All was now ready for the final and largest contract in the scheme to commence. 
This was to comprise the importation of three million tons of sea-dredged shingle to replenish the beach.